Hi there, Kaway from Imaginals here. Very excited to share this personal project of mine. For the past year, we've been building our family home. And one of the big projects that we've looked to undertake was this staircase behind me. With the cost of living continuing to go up, this was one of the big ticket items in the build that we thought we could um, save some money by doing it ourselves. I've never built a staircase before, so we were learning as we went along. We designed this steel staircase with uh, steel stringers on the sides and timber treads uh, for the steps. Here is the steel frame of the staircase installed before the timber treads are installed. We had a steel contractor put in the steel stringers for us. I ordered these beautiful thick thick ash timber from our local timber yard. With the design of the stairs, we wanted the underside of the timber treads to sit flush with the steel cleats that were welded onto the sides of the stringers. They are 16 treads all together and I had to rebate or basically cut into the timber treads so that it would sit flush. Because of the amount of repetitive uh, cutting I have to do for all the timber treads, I decided to 3D print a jig that I could use to help me route all the timber treads exactly how I want it to be. This is basically what we call a jig in the industry and basically it's a template or a pattern that you can use repetitively to help you make your work easier. In this design, I included an outlet so that the vacuum can be hooked up to be able to extract any sawdust that is generated from the routing. After designing my jig in Fusion 360, we brought the design into Cura. Uh, Cura is this licensed software from Ultimaker that allows you to uh, select the material and the print profile to be able to print on your 3D printer. In this design, I selected uh, PETG uh, because uh, I figured it'd be more hard wearing. Because of the size of my jig, I required a large build plate and decided on using the Ultimaker S7 from Ultimaker. The jig fit perfectly within the Ultimaker S7's build volume. The Ultimaker S7 is the latest 3D printer that has been released by Ultimaker and it's a very easy 3D printer to use. Um, it has automated bed leveling, uh, so you don't have to manually level uh, the bed. Also with this 3D printer, which is very handy, is that it has cloud connection. So you can remotely monitor your long 3D prints, even though you're not in the office. The enclosure of the 3D printer coupled with the EPA filter helps maintain the temperature within the printer constant to ensure a successful print all the time. This is what it looks like when it's finished printing. And because it has a flexible build plate, it's really easy to remove. I then went about cutting all the individual timber treads to the correct lengths to fit on the stairs. I used a table saw with a table saw sled that I built. These uh, timber treads are quite thick, about 68 mils thick. I initially got a quote for um, each tread at about $240 per tread. I found out that their timber supplier was a mill in Hayfield, which is about two and a half hours drive from Melbourne. They sold me the timber treads at half the price of what the other company was quoting. That's about $112 each. That's a 50% savings. So it really pays to shop around. Once all the timber treads were cut to the correct size, I then can use my 3D printed jig. I can then start routing all the timber treads individually. My 3D printed jig included a removable spacer to ensure that it is spaced correctly from the timber edge. Once I've clamped the jig and attached the vacuum, I can begin to start routing.
The white base of my hand mounted is also 3D printed. Because of the depth of what I wanted to route out, I had to do it in two or three passes. I also found out by using a couple of pieces of off-cut timber, I could create a seal that would help my vacuum extract all the sawdust from my workspace. After routing the timber, I used a chisel to sharpen all the corners for my timber. Next, I use my router to chamfer all the edges to my timber treads. Once all the timber treads were done and all the rebates were rebated, I then installed these uh, timber tread inserts which will allow me to mechanically connect the timber treads to the metal cleats. With all the preparation that I have done, fitting the timber treads on site was fairly easy. Using the 3D printed jig to route everything proved to be a huge time saver as everything fitted perfectly on site. To add another level of detail to the timber treads, I wanted to install these brass inserts into the nosings of each of the timber treads. Here what I've done is I've routed the nosing of each of the timber treads just enough to receive the brass flat bars. The brass flat bar was the same depth as the cut that I've made. So I actually used some 1.75mm 3D printing filament to uh, make sure that the brass was sitting proud of the timber by 1.75. This stair nosing will provide a visual contrast as well as a tactile feel as you walk across the timber treads. Here's what the brass looks like against the timber treads. The top three treads to the stairs were much harder. Because of its odd shape, I needed to fix two lengths of uh, timber treads together. In order to get a good strong mechanical connection uh, between two lengths of timber treads side by side, I used bench top connectors. Here I'm cutting some pockets so that I can drop in some bench top connectors. So while I'm busy cutting all my timber treads in this uh, video montage, um, let's talk about numbers. I'm sure you all are very interested in figuring out how much I um, spent and saved. So before embarking on this massive project of mine, I did get some quotes from some professional stair manufacturers and the quotes came back and it ranged between 22,000 to 25,000. So in terms of how much I spent on this project, it cost $10,000 uh, to get a professional steel manufacturer to install the steel stringers on site. It cost about uh, $1,900 uh, to get the timber treads and then another $300 for um, the brass inserts. So, all up in this project, I spent around $12,000. That compared with uh, uh, the $25,000 uh, quotation that we got, that's a total saving of $13,000. 
obviously this is purely material cost. Uh, I haven't accounted for any overheads or my hours spent on this project. But overall, I very much enjoyed this project. Uh, it has been very fulfilling to build something this big and learn a new skill. The final outcome is something I can stand back and reflect on the process and the journey that I've made and be proud of something that I've made with my own two hands. Thank you for reaching this far in my video. I hope you found my video very informative and enjoyed the process as much as I have.